go to the whiteboard. All right, so here we are. And this is now for, you're going to implement an algorithm. So you're going to implement XOR, or you're going to use XOR to implement an algorithm. How about that? So XOR for integrity. So what that means is that this is basically a type of a hash value function, right? So you need to do a half uh, a function that does hashing. So what, what that usually means is that you have, you know, let's say this is like a paragraph, right? Of a specific length. You're gonna run it through the hash function, right? So the hash function. And then this is going to give you basically a sequence, you know, a short fixed length, you know, hash value basically, which is gonna be this, okay? <clears throat> Got it? Which is gonna be a sequence of zeros and ones, okay? So let's think of just one algorithm that we can have for this, okay? So we're gonna think of one algorithm, all right? Um, I think I have it here. And I was recording, I think. So let's do. So we already went a little bit over the theory of, of hashing. And then this is, let's call this a very simple hack function. Okay, so a very simple. <clears throat> simple hash function. And you may ask, why not go over SHA-1 or SHA-256? Well, because you're going to implement this, right? And so you want to implement something that's a little bit simpler just to get an idea of how it works. And then, you know, you don't have to understand the full um, hash, all the all the hash algorithms. All right, so, so let's go over some of the description here. So practically all algorithms for computing the hash code um, of a message, view the message as a sequence of n bit blocks. Okay. So what, what does this mean? It means that basically, you know, it's a type of a symmetric block cipher, even for hashing. Okay. So think about that. Practically all algorithms for computing the hash code of a message, view the message as a sequence, okay, of n bit blocks. So let's establish that. So we're going to have a sequence of n bit blocks. So I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to define this. Um, you can take two paragraphs from Wikipedia or something in text um, and define your block size. So the block size is basically all the letters, right? You can include spaces and so on, right? So what's your block size? Eight, 16, one of those two. Multiple of eight, probably. Either one should be fine. So let's say that uh, we're going to define block size to be 8 or 16, okay? Like 16 letters. So the message is processed one block at a time um, in an iterative fashion, okay? So the message is processed one block at a time in an iterative fashion to produce a, an n bit hash code. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say that you select uh, 16, right? Let's go to a new page. So if you select 16, and then you have a, a message that is this long, right? So you're gonna break it up into blocks of size 16, and maybe the last one will require padding, right? So at this point you have block zero, block one, block two, block three, three, and finally block four, which needs to be padded. Do you guys see that? So what I would recommend is that you start with this message and create a list in Python with all your blocks, right? So that's gonna be block one, block two, block three, block four. Oh yeah, I should have started it. 
block zero, basically. All right. And once you have that list, you're going to iterate through them. Okay. So you're going to take a block and XOR it with something, then another block and XOR it with something, and so on. And you just have to decide how you're going to do that. And at the end, what do you end up with? What is the, the final product? Um, the message is processed one block at a time in an iterative fashion. So that just means in a for loop uh, to produce an n bit hash code. So that n bit would be basically of size, let's say 16. Do you guys get it? So the hash value that you end up with is equal to size 16, but it's the result of XORing all of these right, from beginning to end. And you can use a key as well. Do you guys see that? And that's an XORing operation. Now, do you need to do the reverse for this one? You, you can't, right? And you, you don't want, you don't need to for hashing either, right? What do you need to do? Well, just like you did with your friends before, what did you send them? The message and the hash value, right? So what would they do if they have the algorithm they would take the message, run it through the algorithm and get what? The hash value, same, the same hash value. And then you just compare them. Does that make sense, guys? That's it. So as I said, I don't, I think, I don't think this is that difficult this, of an algorithm. We can, uh, we have about uh, 40 minutes so we can, you know, help, you guys can help me. How about that? To kind of write out this code and then you'll finish it on your own, okay? but I can give you some ideas of how to do this, but this is the basic algorithm for it. Now we can make it as complex as we want it to be or as easy as we want it to be, okay? So we can add things. Uh, so perhaps to kind of conclude, perhaps the simplest hash function consists of starting with the first n bit block, okay? XORing it bit by bit with the second n bit block, XORing the result with the next n bit block and so on. And this was this can be referred to as a as the XOR hash algorithm. Do you guys see that? The logic? So what does this if we if we listen carefully, it says perhaps the simplest hash function consists of start of starting with the first n bit block, this one, right? Yeah. And we're gonna XOR it bit by bit with the second n bit block, this one, right? And then the result of this is a block, right? And we're gonna XOR that one with this one, right? Yeah. And the result of that, um, I guess it would be here, right? Gets XORed with this one, right? And then finally, um, that gets XORed with that one and we get the, the final um, hash value over here, which is this one. Okay, and that's a hashing algorithm because the key thing is that every time that we give it a message, the same message, we should always get the same hash, right? That's how you know your algorithm works. And if you go into that message and, set, and change one letter, then you know it should be a different hash value. Got it? All right, so so that's the idea. So I, I would recommend, let's just implement that one. Um, another approach could be to take this, uh, hash it, XOR it with a key, and that output, uh, XOR it with this one, and then XOR it with a key. So we can, but that makes it a little bit more complicated because we have more things in there that we're holding on to. Okay, so let's just go with this one for now, the simplest one. So this one does not really require a key, correct? But we could add a key if we wanted to. Do you guys see this? Any questions? Yeah, please. This will be a, a separate link, not what we did on Tuesday. So what we did on Tuesday, I already created the link and I'll create a link for this one for you to submit as a separate thing. All right, so that's the algorithm, okay? So now let's go ahead and try to implement it. So let's go back to Brightspace, or sorry, to the VM. 
So I'm going to, yeah, the VM is open. Great. So let's do clear ls dash. Oops. Um, let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing here. Okay, I'm going to share this. Okay. Now, that is okay. So let's do. Since we already did the other script, I'm just going to copy that script into a new file. So I'm just going to say CPX or tab. And I'm going to create now a new one. What do you guys want to call this one? Let's call it um, hash XOR. How about that? Hash, oops, let's do lowercase, hash XOR.py. Okay. So we're going to try to implement this, uh, but I want to just copy some of it so that I have it there. So now let's do hash XOR. Okay. So I have all my functions here, right? So I can reuse all these functions instead of, you know, having to type them up. And we just have to think about the logic that we want to use. Okay. So I'm going to comment out some things since I'm, I may not need everything, right? So let's comment out this and let's comment out this. Right, because the problem that we're gonna have now, now this this one's fine, right? So print key is fine. So that's fine. We can get rid of this one. Okay. Now we need to change this uh, to something else. Uh, so I'm gonna change it to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You guys should get like a paragraph. A, B, B, C, C, F, F. All right, so what we need to, so that's a message I think long enough. I'm gonna make the size actually eight bytes, okay? So, or, or eight letters basically. Okay, I also could have done lowercase. Um, so the question that I need to figure out first is what? What do I need to do? I know that these functions kind of work, right? Now, currently this, the length is defined as the size of the message, right? But that's not what I'm gonna do now, correct? So instead, what should this be? Yeah. Or eight, yeah, very good. I'm just doing eight because my is shorter, right? You guys will probably have like longer paragraphs so you can do 16, got it? But I'm doing eight. All right, so I've got the length. Um, so one thing I can do is just look at the, to do the math, is to print out the length of the message so that when we divide it by eight, I know how many blocks I have, right? So that's the very first challenge is to take the message, break it into blocks so that then you can begin to XOR. So that's, that's kind of the whole game. And when we do deaths, we, we have to do this again. So print uh, length of plain text. You just want to know how big it is. Right? So control X, Y, run it. And, oh, and this one, yeah, I haven't run yet. So let's do Python here. Like that, space. All right, so it's 84 um, characters, but the key, as you can see, is much shorter, right? So the key is shorter. Um, okay, and it should be for a block of eight. So now let's go back. So now what we need to do is we need to find a way to iterate through this message and 
extract the blocks. One thing that I what I that I would definitely recommend to make things easier is to create a list that holds the blocks. So I'm going to create a list called list of blocks. Okay? And that just makes it a lot easier because I just take the message, run it through some for loop or something, and I'm going to get um the block. So let's think about that one. <laughs> So we probably want to create a function for that, that returns that list. So. There's a lot of ways that this could be done. Just trying to think of a simple one. All right, so. Hmm. Let's create, so this is just gonna be list of blocks like that. Um, break message, no, create blocks. Let's, let's, let's say create blocks is the function, correct? Should lower keys, excuse me. What is the input to create blocks? Plain text, right? So then I'm gonna go over here and create my function. Define create blocks. Oops. Yeah. And let's just say plain here. One, two, three, four. I feel like we did this before on the on the on Tuesday. We did something like this. Remember when we were trying to grab two characters at a time? Do you guys remember that? That we had the letters and they were like two digits, zero for if it was seven, it was a zero seven, or if it was so we did do something, right? What was the solution to that one? Do you guys remember? And the loop we went up by two instead of one. A step size, right? We had a step size. Why not use that here? Do you see what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's similar, right? Similar idea. So I'm um, we're basically reusing that same code. So let's try that. So uh, I'm gonna create a list here. Let's call it temp list, maybe, so that you don't you know kind of what I mean. So temp list blocks. So we did that before and we're gonna repeat it. And then I'm gonna do for I in range of, um, now let's start at zero to length of, length of what? Plane. Yes, or plane in this case, yeah. Now, what should the blocks, what should the step size be? Eight. Eight, right, size of block. So since we already know it, which is this one here, what we can do is we can just pass this length to the function. Do you see what I'm saying? To just be a little bit more consistent. Got it, guys? Make sense? So this is length. And so now, because we set this, we can specify here block size, correct? And so we can use block size as the step size. So that means we start at zero and then we go to eight. That grabs the first block. Then the other one, another eight. So it should be 16 and then, and then so on, right? So we'll test it obviously to see if it worked, but um, 
you know, we should be able to see something. So then I'm going to say block size here. So once I do this, I'm iterating through the text and I'm scooping basically every eight letters, right, into a, into a thing. So I can if I want to. So now I'm going to say one, two, three, four, block equals. So this is where I have to grab. Um, To grab what? What do you guys think? So I grab the data from what? From plane, right? Yep. Starts at zero, so this would be I, right? The next one will be eight, correct? And so on. So I two this this just means the range that what i'm gonna grab i think we did something similar uh on tuesday i think we indexed them on tuesday because we only had two values it was easier here i'd have to index eight of them so we're gonna do this instead this just means the range so from zero to what five plus seven you're correct i think you're just off by one so i think it's i plus eight um, because it starts at zero, it's not gonna include eight, it's gonna include seven. Zero, one, two, three, all the way to seven. But like I said, you're right, and let's just test it out and see if we get the blocks that we want. But yeah, very good. So this is I plus let's go with eight. How about that? Um, and that could this could also be block size, actually, so that we are not hard coding numbers. That way, when you guys change it to 16 or something, uh, it'll be super easy. Got it? All right. So now there's the padding, of course, that we have to account for, but that's only for the last block. So for now, since we, in theory, now we have all the blocks, right? Every iteration, we've got a block. What do we need to do now? I said just add them to a list, right? So let's just do that. So I got temp list blocks, right? Temp list blocks dot append. So this is how you add things into a list. And what do we add? Block. Okay. So now that this is done, all I have to do is return this. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four. And I'm going to say return. What do I return? Temp list blocks. Yes. Temp list blocks. Exactly. All right. So if everything is correct, and I had already set that up over here, list blocks, so all I want to do is print it out. So hopefully, if we did that, I mean, we've done a lot of this, right? So list of blocks. Oops. Any questions? All right, so now let's go ahead and try it out oh uh, oh yeah i have two ends in there so it should be for i for i in range control x y all right so now we have something what do you guys think did it work yeah so uh, how do we know Check all of these, right? You need to check all of these and make sure that you have basically eight letters in there, okay? And then now we have these, just like we did the first example, and we can XOR with the key, basically. Okay, so we're going to... Um, now, we still have to account for the last one, right? So we still have to account for uh, this YYZ over here, which only has four. Do you guys see that? So what do we do with that one? Padding, right? Remember that we did padding last in, you know, in the previous lab? So we have to go in and kind of fix that somehow. 
So before we add it into block size, what should we do? Or sorry, into the list, we can check the block length, right? We can say if length of block equal what? Or block size, just so that it's easier to change. So block size, like that, right? So if, if it's equal, then we add it to the list, right? So one, two, three, four, no problem. If it's not, else, we need to take one, two, three, four, a step before just to add the padding. And remember, you can't just like add a fixed padding. It's gotta be a padding based on um, what's missing. So we need to take some kind of a difference, right? Um, of, to fi figure out how many characters to add as padding. So that could be something like C equals eight or block size. Yeah. Minus length of block. So if length of block in our previous example was four and block size is eight, eight minus four is four. So then we just need to add four characters and we have that as an integer. So then also, so let's say block the block last block is three. So then eight minus three is five. So we need to add five characters and so on. All right, so now how do we add them? These are still strings, so how do we add them? Is that it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Concatenate something to the end, right? So for um, I in range and then C, right? C because that's the number of characters that are missing. Um, so we're going to do colon one, two, three, four. And now we're going to have block equal block concatenate and maybe just add because it's a string at <laughs> spaces. Does this make sense, guys? Any questions? All right, so let's do control X, Y, clear. Oops, sorry. Let's, uh, if it worked, <laughs> it went as far as X, it didn't uh, do YYZ. I have an idea of why. What did I miss? I forgot to add that block, right? After it's modified. So we need to, we needed to do temp <coughs> list blocks dot append. And what do we append? This last modified block. So now this one should be padded and we should be good. <coughs> All right, so control X, Y. Did it work? You don't think. No. Yeah, right, it's got the spaces now. So the key with this one is that by adding that padding, when we XOR it, it's not going to break, okay? All right, so good. So we have this now. Now the goal, oh yeah, go ahead. What variable are you keeping in front of you? To, to get these? Yeah, which? It's the list. I'm printing the list. So if you look over here, the function create blocks just takes the string, breaks it into blocks of eight, and it returns a, that list, right, where we're adding. So that's the function create blocks returns it here. 
list the block. So that's what I'm printing down here. And that gives me my blocks. So that's what a symmetric encryption is, okay? So, and this is how cryptography works. So this is not like, this is literally like how you, everything you do pretty much works, <laughs> right? So I just selected integrity uh, because it's an easier algorithm to start with than something more complex. All right, and, and the other ones will require encryption and decryption, right? But this one does not require decryption, so it makes it a little bit smoother. As we move forward, we'll see, okay, you'll you'll do it in one direction, but then you have to go back, right? Got it? All right, so what do we need now? So we got the list of blocks. That's great. That's wonderful. And now what we do is we need to perform the encryption. So I, you know, I prefer to do like functions. So now let's do then a new function. The it's it this function should return what? Hash value, right? That's what it should return. What's the length of hash value? Uh the length of block, eight, basically. Okay, that's what it should be. So, and that's when, you know, when you work, you know, let's say you work with a partner, you would send them that hash value, right? So this thing that you get here is what you send to them, right? And then they need to have the same algorithm, obviously, take the message, run it through the algorithm, and they would get this exact same hash value. Okay, guys? That's it. All right. So let's keep going. And I'm trying to help you out see how far we can get, and then you guys can just uh, complete it, okay? Uh, remember, we're going to do this. This actually, this XOR code, we'll come back to a couple of times during the semester. Um, all right, so let's think here. What do I need? I need a new function, right? What do we call it? Let's call it hash function, like that. Hash function. All right. So what does hash function take? Well, let's look at encrypt, right? Because really the encrypt that we did before is something very similar, right? That's kind of what we need. So in here we had a key and we have a plane. Now we do have a key, right? We do have a key and we can always XOR more, more things because you could have one encryption here for block and block and return something. And then that something is XORed with the key and returns something. You see that? So you can always add more of these, these operations. But to keep it simple, the algorithm just said that we would take the blocks and encrypt them, right? So um, let's, so then let's just avoid a key for now. So that means that all we need is what? List of blocks, correct? That's all we need so far. So list of blocks, because we have our blocks in there and we just want to produce a hash value. So now let's go ahead and define hash function. So got a new line. Yeah. Okay, and let's do define find hash underscore funk list of blocks guys over there so we've got list of blocks colon one two three four all right so how do what do we do now hmm this is a good question right so we need to we need two blocks, right? Block one and block two, and we need to XOR them. Okay. Or we could have a key just for the starter, and then that <laughs> makes the code a little bit easier, I think. So we got to think about that logic. There's a lot of ways of doing this, a lot of ways. 
So what's one obvious thing? We need to have in here, um, we need to have a block and a key. Well, let's, we can, well, we can start with this. So I'll kind of get you started. So for block and list of blocks, right? And let's just print it. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, print block. Okay, so let's just do that. So X, Y. All right, so we know a way of just getting the the pieces in there. What's an easy way to, of solving this? We could back throw the blocks to each other. Block one to block two. We could. Could. But then we need to grab two blocks at a time. I'm just trying to think of an easy way of doing this, like the easiest. Now we we have the encrypt function already, right? Don't we have that encrypt function? That that function works really well um, if you give it a plane and a key of the same size, and then it returns an encrypted thing, a cipher. And then maybe that thing that returns could be encrypted with the next block. Do you see where I'm going with this? So, so I, I'm saying maybe just use this function, okay? So we need a key of size eight, right? Um, and the plane, and that would give us an XOR version of that. That output becomes the input would replace key, I guess. Hmm. We got to think about that one. So we could also do ORD. One reason to have a key is that if we only XOR this plane with another plane, they both have a pattern. Do you see that? Whereas we XOR a plane with a key, the key is supposed to be random. So it should add more randomness to the encryption. So there's also that. But I, I'm gonna say, let's just have, Block and block. Cipher block. Let's have that. Cipher block. Oh, okay. Maybe like this. Cipher block. Cipher block equals something for now. Okay. So we're going to say just this is just an example. So we've got um, just going to say zero, zero, just to kind of give you an idea because we're run, running out of time. So if you think about this cipher block, then we're going to let's think about the logic like a like pseudocode. So we would XOR block. I'm just going to say XOR cipher block, right? Cipher block. Do you see this? And this should return what? A new block, which we can call cipher block. Do you see where, where I'm going with this? And so then what do we do the next iteration? The next iteration, we get the new block and it gets XORed with what? The previous cipher block. Do you guys see this? Does this logic work? 
So we, we just need to start with a cipher block that is some, some initialization vector. Then we're, we're going to iterate through all the blocks. One, two, three, four. This is the block. So we just take block XOR cipher block, and that replaces the old cipher block with a new cipher block so that when we do the next iteration, it'll be the new block with the result from the previous operation. You guys see that the logic here so um yeah i think this might work right so we just need to figure out what this could be so we could use the key for this one as a starting point and we just have to be constant with that that should always be the the value that we're going to use that key for the initial for the cipher block and then we're just gonna take block x source cipher block yeah i think so i think that should work actually all right so try to work on that okay uh see if you can uh implement it in the end you should end up with an eight you know um a final cipher block and um you know try give it your best shot okay i want to see you guys try try to do it and then we'll see how it goes next week okay any questions all right, otherwise, um, I'll post this recording, go over it. Um, so we'll stop.